All right, what's up? It's Dan from Crypto Camacho, and I'm here with a special guest, Roderick Spector from Hypester.org. Hey, Roderick, how you doing? What's up, man? I'm good. Couldn't be couldn't be more excited to talk to you. I've been uh, I've been trying to get this interview, been hoping to get this interview for a really long time. Um, I recently stumbled across Hypester, right, and I've been kind of exploring Spectro Indicator, exploring your cryptocurrency course. And really, really excited just to kind of get to know you, to dig in and, and really understand kind of where Hypester came from, you know, what your background is, um, who you are, how'd you get in the cryptocurrency markets and so forth. Um, so thanks for thanks for being on my, my show here. I appreciate it. You're a cool guy. I would do anything for you. You know it. <laughs> thanks, man. Um, so really, let's just kind of kick it off. For those that may not know, uh, Roderick is the founder and really the creator of Hypester.org. And on Hypester.org, there, there's a couple things, right? Um, I'll kind of go over it briefly, but then I want you to give maybe an intro of what Hypester really is. But um, Hypester is, you know, a, a, a cryptocurrency or a financial indicator and a cryptocurrency course that I kind of stumbled upon and just been really intrigued at how it works. You know, you were able to set buy and sell alerts and, and show kind of when to buy and when to sell in the cryptocurrency markets. Um, so really excited, but I kind of butchered that a little bit. Maybe you could give a better better intro of what Hypester is. Uh, well, it's an indicator. That's a, like if I had to use one word, that's it. You know, like that's the technical way to define it. Yeah. But its creation was pretty much an accident. And uh, hmm. because I, like I, we were talking about before, I created for me and like for specific reasons back when I was working, you know, for the fund. And... Uh, I created all like to boost my trading strategies and to help the, the, the traders that were starting working with us uh, to help them in a way that it would, it would take a lot less time for them to become more profitable and more yeah. consistent. So it was more of like a auxiliary <clears throat> sorry, tool <clears throat> to, you know, like, hey, you should sell here because mm -hmm. beginners always like don't use stop loss or they panic and then go sell when they should. Yeah. And uh, so it was meant to, you know, minimize risk. Uh, but I always traded myself, so I never really thought about uh, selling or renting mm -hmm. it. You know, like it was never the the ideal. Yeah. And, uh, and then there was the army. And uh, okay. the idea of joining the army and stuff, I was like, well, there's, I have a family and uh, there's a certain lifestyle that I provide. Yeah. And I was like, well, I have to, you know, come up with a way to just make money even when I'm not here trading or mm -hmm. working. And that's when I thought, what if I just share my indicator with people and see if they like? Okay. And uh, I showed it to one guy a lot long ago. Um, I don't even remember, like probably one year ago. It was a very different version. Yeah. Uh, and he just went crazy. <laughs> He's like, no, we have to show this to people and stuff. And I was like, oh, my God. <laughs> it kind of sounds like me when I first saw it. I was like, whoa, what is this? I got to show this to other people. <laughs> yeah, yeah and, and I never, you know, like, I was the only one who used it and a few people that worked for me. And uh, that's how it always started. Okay. And I, a lot of people tried to buy it from me and stuff like that. And then I just said, like, man, everybody's trying to buy this thing. It must be better than I'm thinking because... <laughs> It's so normal, you know, so yeah. I kept it and I started, you know, talking to people and showing, getting feedback. And I realized, like, that was meant for me mm -hmm. and I knew it and I like the mechanics of it. So it didn't require so much information for me because I kind of understood where it's coming from. Sure. But when I start selling to people, they don't. Gotcha. And that was the first challenge. I had to start changing the, the engine and, you know, the way it's... Uh, plotted visually mm -hmm. so other people could understand where it comes from without understanding the code, which is another challenge. Yeah. Right? So, uh, so just, just to give everybody a little bit of context. So, I mean, the thing that, that really kind of drew me to Hypester to, to Spectre Indicator is literally when you go on and I, I have made a couple other videos before this. So if, if you guys aren't familiar with what we're talking about, look at a few of my previous videos on, on Spectro Indicator. But what really kind of drew me to it at first is, is literally you know, you're watching the charts and those of you that trade cryptocurrency or, or trade on the NASDAQ or S&P 500 or anything like that, you guys know, right? The charts are always changing depending on the time frame. You can buy or sell and, and people are always looking for a way to predict the markets, right? Is it a bullish market? Is it a bearish market? When should I buy? When should I sell? And the cool thing about, about Spectro, it, it, what intrigued me is kind of its its ability to, 
give you indicators of when to buy and sell, like the exact times you can buy and sell, you know, based on if it's a bullish or a bearish market, um, almost like using artificial intelligence, machine learning to, to basically set these indicators to, to, to basically notify you or to let you know when you should buy and sell. And that's what's really intriguing to me. And I think a lot of people out there are looking for things like that. You know, AI is becoming stronger. Machine learning is becoming stronger. And I, I was just really impressed when I first saw it. I was like, you know, my audience would love this tool because it's a way that they can, you know, for, for newbies, for maybe intermediate traders and even expert traders, a way for them to kind of not fully rely on Spectro or, or rely on that indicator, but to give them a, another um, I guess set of arsenal to really let them know when they should buy and sell. And so how, like you, you said a lot, like when you introduced yourself and I'm kind of, I want to kind of back up just a little bit. Um, so you said that you worked at a, a financial firm and I guess first, first of all, give us, give us a little background about kind of where you come from in the, in the work world, in the career world. Like how did you start off? Like, where did you learn to, to build something like this? And how did you learn to trade? Um, did you, you know, you, things like that. Like how did it all start? It all started when I was 14 years old. Okay. You know, I always liked coding. I, do, I don't even recall why or where it started. I just remember when I was a kid, computers, uh, they didn't even have like Windows. I remember my dad had one of those, you know, like DOS. Oh, uh, you know, nice. Like, yes. <laughs> you know, like the, the, the prompt, you know. Are you, then, uh, are, you, are you old enough to remember uh, bulletin boards? You might be a little younger than I think you're younger than me, but you remember bulletin boards? Before the, the, the discs where you had to... Well, it was, um, you would connect to like, it was like the old school internet. You'd dial up in modems and you'd connect to certain sites. Yeah. And this yeah. was way, this was way back in the day, but okay. It was before that, it was before the internet. Okay, keep, keep going, sorry. I just wanted to know if you knew that. <laughs> I don't know, I think I was born a nerd or something. And, uh, and then I always <laughs> liked to create stuff. So when I was 14, I always liked games too. So I was like... I like the game, but I don't like certain rules of the game. I like to improve it. Sure. So I started creating my own <laughs> pirate servers. Okay. So whatever game I used to play, I, I tried to emulate a server, and uh, it required a C++. That was the first language I ever saw. Wow. And, uh, at 14, that's good. 14. That's yeah, awesome. At, yeah. At first, at first, like what I used to do, I was, uh, I just read the scripts. You mm -hmm. know. Try to, to understand what is written there, what's going on, and I just read things that were already made, mm -hmm. and, you know, again and again, and then I change a line and see what happens. Of course, it took much longer if I, you know, if I did a course, but I was fourteen. Sure, and yeah. I didn't have my own money and stuff. What game so were you? Started. What What game were you programming on, or what game were you playing? Oh this is just too. But I got. I gotta know. I gotta know because I'm in. <laughs> When I when I was young, the big game was Mortal Kombat, Street Fighter. You couldn't program those games, but I know it's evolved. Like Minecraft, you can, you know, you can program and you can do all things, all kinds of things like that. World of Warcraft, things like that. But what game? What game were you playing? You got to tell you're, us. You're gonna, you're gonna have to buy me a beer to get. The <laughs> okay, fair enough. Fair enough. Is, no, I can't. I'm sorry. No, that's okay. Okay, so you see. So you... If it got personal. Personal. No, that's okay. It's okay. So. No. You... So you had this game though, and you were programming it on private servers to mod to modify yeah. it, basically. Okay. Okay. So the game was cheap, yeah. Like I don't think it was very okay. cheap in the US. Yeah. Very, very primitive. Okay. And I was, like was fifteen years ago. Yeah, you know? sure. Yeah. Um. So uh, never mind. But eventually, when I grew up, I I kept coding, you know, a little bit here and there. Then when I got to my, you know, sixteens and seventeens, I wasn't really a good student. Sure. I was a funny guy, like I think most of the people. Same with me. You know, <laughs> Similar. Like I, I, when I grew up, I think I, I, I finally met the good things that life offers you. Let's sure. Put it this way. <laughs> a little cooler than coding sometimes. Sure. And uh, well, then I kind of stopped until there was the college time, right? Okay. And I had to choose something. I was like. I, back in the days, I was competing martial arts and stuff, and okay. I was really into, you know, fighting. And I thought about uh, doing uh, physical education. I don't know if you guys have the same course. Yeah, 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 we do. Yeah. And then I realized, like, I would be broke if I did. Mm -hmm. And uh, there was also a big family pressure, you know, like, that I should do, you know, like a proper college and stuff like that. Sure, yeah. So I was in Brazil back then. Okay. And the, the, the college application there, they, it's 
very different from U.S. Mm -hmm. Here they take into consideration your whole history, right? In Brazil, they don't take into consideration. Oh, wow. Yeah. I didn't realize that. But yeah. there's one big test which happens once a year and super hard. Yeah. So what most people do in Brazil, they kind of slack off during school and mm -hmm. then they do a prep course where they bust their, mm -hmm. I, I can't say bad words, right? That's fine. Whatever. Whatever goes. <laughs> so, yeah. So you just study really hard and, you know, and then you try the test. That's what I did. Thankfully, otherwise I would have no hope. And it's funny because I actually applied yes. for some colleges in U.S. Yeah. Some good ones, and I got approved in all of them. But I guess it's because uh, there's a minority thing, right? So yeah. I don't think it's a very uh, fair thing because sure. my wife, for instance, she's a valedictorian. Nice. Very good student. Nice. Nothing, nothing like. So me. she's smart she too. Get, <laughs> yeah. She didn't get in in the college that I got in. So I know it, it's not a fair process. <laughs> sure. No, I, I wouldn't disagree with you on that. There's, yeah. yeah, That's a different conversation, but yeah, I wouldn't disagree. Yeah, you know, because it's not fair that I, I got in. And, you know, I'm a, I was a maniac. I, I, I shouldn't be there. So, <laughs> but you were a smart maniac. I mean, a coder at 14, you know, that's that's impressive. And I think more and more kids are starting to to get into that. But it, but And I always tell my, my, like my nephew and my niece and just people that are younger than me, like, look, if you learn a coding background, you're going to have huge opportunities in the future. And, and you're kind of a very clear case of that. You learned to code early on and that kind of gave birth to, to, you know, maybe some of the other businesses you've done, which we could touch on, but also Hypester, Spectre Indicator and, and, and kind of everything you've done. So, I mean, keep, keep going with your story on, on this. Cause I think it's really interesting. Uh, yeah, no, you made me think on, on, uh, you changed my perspective a little bit. And that's interesting because you say, Oh, you learn coding very early, but you see that the fact is, and now that I'm realized that Hypester and Spectre is kind of, they come from this core yes. uh, thing, which yes. is, it's not the coding itself, but it's actually just learning anything without, you know, yeah. oh, this is hard. I can't do math. Or, yeah. you know, I, I never thought this way. So I think that was something that helped me a lot. Yeah. Like, oh, I want you to do this. What, what do I have to do? Mm -hmm. So I just read and I did it. You know, I, if people told me it was hard or not, I just kept it trying. Yeah. And, and that's what I try to, you know, if, if you're in the, the Telegram group and stuff, I was like, man, anyone can do anything. You just have to yeah. put some effort into it. Yeah, yeah. And it's so I funny. I was just, I was, spectrum. I was literally just telling that to my my family the other day, like, or my my like nieces and nephews, like, you gotta just learn to learn. If you can learn to learn. You could learn trading, you could learn, you know, coding, you could learn really anything you want. And like, you're a, you are like a, a perfect example of that. Um, but I mean, sorry, keep, keep going though. I want to. Yeah. yeah. Uh, once I was in a, I don't know if you guys have this here. I was in another country too. And it's kind of a spiritual experience where you can only go if someone invites you. It's like sure. a club. Okay. And he told me something very interesting that, you know, affected me in many ways, which is like, everybody has a limited amount of time. Sure. Everybody. So what makes you powerful? It's how well you use your time. Mm -hmm. There's one major variable that is going to make you be like under the average, average or above average, which is how fast you learn. Mm -hmm. Because in average, everybody has the same amount of time. Mm -hmm. So the faster you learn, the more you achieve. It's a very good, smart, it's a good insight. Yeah. I mean, that kind of eat me alive. So like, in a bad way sometimes because I can even read like a fiction book. Mm -hmm. If I'm not reading like a technical book, it's sure. too bad. I feel like I'm wasting time. Me too. I feel that same way. Like I, yeah, feel the exact yeah, same way. I'm watching Netflix and I think like, why am I not watching like a documentary? Yep. <laughs> I do the same thing. That's like, funny. <laughs> yeah. So, but also it works. It works because I have done a lot of different stuff in my life because I've always pushed myself to, to learn. Yeah. Uh, so let's go back to the beginning, right? Um, then college, my family was like, oh, I should do like a, you know, like a, a good course, mm -hmm. uh, like engineering, you know, law, and I was stupid enough to listen. And, uh, <laughs> and then I decided not to be just a little bit stupid. I went all the way in and I decided to do a double grad. In Brazil, it's also different. So if you want to do two colleges at the same time, you can if you survive. Okay. So I chose two. So I was doing computer engineering in the morning and then law school in the afternoon. Oh, wow. wow that's intense. So, and like, yeah, man. It was like six hours, six hours plus work. That's intense. 
when I got in college, I already worked for myself. Because okay. at the age of 16, I was already, you know, into martial arts, competing. And when I was 16, uh, you know, like supplement, uh, supplements, you know, like gym stuff. Yeah, yeah, supplements. Yeah, stuff. yeah. So when I was 16, this stuff was starting to arrive in Brazil. Okay. It was like very new, you know. Yeah. I remember my dad telling me, this is... This is steroids. I don't want you taking this. Oh, just this the supplements is, themselves, yeah, <laughs> like creatine yeah. or what? Yeah. Years, years later, his uh, his whatever doctor told him to take it. You know, it's. Oh, that's funny. funny. <laughs> yeah, it was like right in the beginning. So what I did, I started to resell it. You know, at my gym and stuff, and uh, I that's when I actually started making decent money. Okay. I was making around two grand. Yeah. A day. 16 so it was very good for me but this was just selling supplements to people at the gym right okay like kind of a little uh, side hustle gym or in my like uh, the martial art place okay that I used to train and stuff yeah because i used to compete so i used to know a lot of people okay and it was the beginning nobody sold that sure so yeah. like one store and the guy was my friend so i used to buy from him like kind of affiliate market you know he gave me like a that's funny yeah you were the you were the affiliate marketer offline yeah for supplements, yeah. yeah. No, that's funny because that that was a big market back then, like when it all started out. Yeah. So when I when I turned eighteen, uh, I failed one year in, in high school. Okay. Yeah, and I, actually I failed not because of grades, because I was a delinquent. Okay. Sounds pretty so, pretty pretty. Sounds like a common. Honestly, it sounds pretty common for for people that are entrepreneurs that are kind of doing their own thing and that kind of find their own way. They always they always have these stories of. They either yeah. failed or they got into trouble or, you know, whatever. And then they found the light and you're getting, yeah. you're getting there. But <laughs> was that? when I was 16, 14 or something, so my, I was in private schools and yeah. stuff and all my friends went to this one specific school, all my friends. Uh -huh. And it was high school. It's super important that I, you know, like I wish I went with them, but then sure. my dad forced me to take like a test to, for the best uh, private school in my city. And I, I, man, I, I didn't do it. You know, like I wrote some <laughs> very absurd stuff on that test and I got approved. Oh, nice. And no, it wasn't nice. <laughs> well, you were pissed because you wanted to go with your friends. <laughs> because my dad forced me to go to that school and I said, if you put me there, I'm not going to go to school. Mm -hmm. And that's how I failed one year. Oh, <laughs> wow, wow. Gotcha. Okay. Sounds... I was a bad kid. I was a bad kid. <laughs> so, yeah. And then college i kind of like okay i you know i messed up in high school i'm gonna listen to him sure so engineering and then law mm -hmm. and during the afternoon between the colleges i had to manage my company because when i turned 18 i opened a company so i could buy the supplements from the suppliers and get a bigger margin like so, a like a brick and mortar kind of store you opened or what type uh, of at, at first since i didn't have a lot of money i just opened uh you know like with the papers okay you know, paper yeah stuff. So I could just because this the the big suppliers they don't sell to individuals. Oh, to become just a legitimate okay, just to become a legitimate yeah. company. Gotcha. Yeah. So I eventually opened stores, but yeah. at first no. Okay. Uh, and that's how I started making money. That was I was eighteen, and and then pretty much the three years if you ask what I did was like I studied and worked. Sure. Like a flash. Sure. You know, like studying and working. And after those three years, I had three stores, and wow. I just opened my e-commerce back then. Okay. And I was around twenty three. So you yeah, around. so you evolved kind of from kind of this little side hustle of selling supplements to people at the gym, you know, your martial arts places, yeah. whatnot, to opening some brick and mortar stores and then from brick and mortar stores to actually opening up an e commerce store and, yeah. and still selling supplements, right? But the e commerce is very important in this whole story. Yeah, sure. Because when I did the e-commerce, it was back in 2008 or something. Sure, okay. It, it, was, it was expensive. Yeah. You know, like, having a website was yep. hard. Having an e-commerce was like, you know? Yeah, I remember. <laughs> it was harder, yeah. Yeah, but, yeah, it was Brazil, too. It wasn't the yeah. United States. So we were kind of like a couple years lagging behind, sure. you know, everything. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, that was it. I was selling, I can tell you many horror stories. Because, man, you're 18. I, Nobody was helping you with my business. <laughs> yeah. I made so many mistakes. I'm sure. So many mistakes. But what happened was when I was 23, I didn't I, I didn't finish the colleges yet mm -hmm. because I started doing like one year one and then the other the other year one because I didn't have enough time because of work. Okay. 
but I was just trying to finish it. And then the last year, I was like 23. Mm -hmm. I was on this, the last year of engineering in the junior year of law. Okay. And uh, I had a heart attack. Oh, no. Wow. A real, wow. Yeah. And how old were you? You were 23? 23. Wow. A heart attack. Yeah, man. It was crazy. Like, I was sleeping four hours uh, per day, like every day for the last five years. Yeah. I was like, you know, working out, I was competing, I was training martial arts, I was going to two colleges and I was mm -hmm. managing a company. And like, you're young, you don't really feel it, you know? So yeah. I kept pushing, pushing, pushing until this day. Yeah. I, I was 23. I used to work out uh, during my lunch break, so I used to eat really fast. I could work out in between the sure. one hour. Uh, and then when I came back to the office, I started sweating, yeah. you know, like a lot. Wow. And I started feeling like I was going to throw up. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, it's normal, you know, like. You're just tired. You're worked out. Or, yeah. yeah. And then I started, like, my, my teeth started tingling. And I'm like, man, this is not normal. Yeah. And then, and then I, uh, I decided to go downstairs because it, well, my office was kind of big. And uh, when, I, when I stood up, instantly I felt like, you know, like, Oh my god, I'm gonna faint. And then my whole left side started tingling and I was like, Oh my god. There's wow. something really cool That's happening. scary. Yeah. So I got in the car, went straight to the hospital. Yeah. That's the, the funny part. When I got to the hospital, the, the lady was like, What's happened to you? I was like, I don't know, man. Like, yeah, I'm sure. My pressure, but there's something wrong with me. Yeah. And then the, the, the sacred nurse, uh, after she, she checks my pressure, she instantly runs through the hall. And started yelling, doctor, doctor. Wow. So this and this was, like, this was all in Brazil, right? And okay, okay. And then after that, I was like pretty much passed out. You just uh, wow, that's crazy. Yeah, like I had some flashes. I don't want to get too spiritual in this conversation. Sure. Man, it was pretty messed up. Intense. And, uh, when I woke up, I had this doctor looking at me like, "Yo, we gotta talk." You're gonna die if you keep doing what you're doing. Like wow. I don't know what you're doing, but it's wrong. You know. And then I was like, "What? What happened?" Yeah. I don't know. I just woke up. Can you tell me? Sure. Yeah. And when me that, like my heart like started like uh, hyper accelerating, and then you know reset it for a second. Yeah. You know, was it because? Like, was it because you were just overly like overly stressed out, overly working, not sleeping enough? Um, yeah. And your heart like, just couldn't take it. I, a lot of tests after a lot and I, everything was normal yeah except my uh cortisol levels okay but, yeah. yeah cortisol yeah yeah they were really high so she said it was probably related to stress and she explained me about burnout syndrome and stuff got it so that's when i decided to sell my companies okay and i, I sold my company and uh and i decided to drop out both of my colleges because as i you know this whole thing kind of made me change my whole perspective. Sure. Like, why am I doing those things? Yeah. I don't even like this shit. Yeah. You know? It's a wake up call. I mean, I'm sure it's a wake up call, especially at 23. Like you got all this stuff, but it's like killing you. And then, and then literally, I mean, <laughs> literally it is killing you. If I die tomorrow, would I be happy? I was like, yeah, I partied a lot because I made money. Sure. Like, not a lot, but decently a, a yeah. lot for my age. Sure. I had yeah. a lot of fun, but I didn't accomplish shit. Sure. You know, like, I mean, I don't know. I mean, that's that's in the eye of the beholder. It's interesting you say that because a lot of people out there, you know, would love to have had companies and start an e-commerce shop and start these brick and mortars. And a lot of people think that's completely successful. But it's interesting because it's perspective, right? And and um, it, it kind of led you to where you are today, which is it's really interesting though how that that happens. That's why I don't want to get too spiritual. But when that kind of happened to me, I realized that for one second I thought there was no more. Yeah. And all this stuff was like gone. And it didn't like, matter, right? I mean, like my family, my friends, everybody that I, I didn't do much. Yeah. I bought a nice car, I bought a nice bike. Sure. But yeah. You know, and it's funny because I'm as we talk, we're going to see how this is going to happen again. And most people do this. So, you know, money is something that really clouds your judgment. Sure. And yeah. I that's why I actually succeeded as a trader uh, later. Because I always traded, uh, I always liked this. Now that it's the funny fact, when I was 18, I wanted to do two things. I wanted either to be police or work with the stock market. Okay. Yeah. Interesting. 
Yeah, don't ask. I don't know. Why, why the stock market? Just because of the allure? Like the excitement kind of? Or? I'm a gamer. And I thought, okay, like, yeah. This whole process of like filtering information, analyzing, right. making decisions, you know, in front of your computer kind of appealed to me. It makes sense, yeah. It makes sense. And also, like, the Wall Street lifestyle kind of attracted me, but uh, most of the guys that come from this specific, I don't want to judge. Like the, like the Gordon Geckos, if you've seen that movie. Yeah, that, like, yeah. Like, I know a lot of guys that work with that, and most of them, I don't want to generalize, but let's say Pareto's Law, 80% of them are all jerks. Sure, sure. Yeah, and like... So I wait, so wait, so back up a little, so... So you, you start these e-commerce shops, you start these brick and mortar shops, you kind of overextend yourself, you have a heart attack and it kind of completely changes your world, shatters everything you know and you think, okay, I'm going to get rid of this. I don't need this. But then how did you go from that? How did you get into trading? And I was always trading. Oh, you were trading this whole time. Okay, gotcha. At my, like I was saying, I told my dad, hey, I want to work with the stock market and he told me this doesn't work okay. because he lost money. Got it, and got it. Today. This is gambling and stuff, and I was like, oh, I'm going to listen to him because my dad used to have like a very solid business. Okay, sure. We understand more, you know. Sure, yeah. Me. And then at my first year, right freshman, uh, my calculus teacher, he was very, very into stocks. And then instantly he dragged okay. me Okay. So you were trading just like like stocks, like on the like the NASDAQ yeah. or S&P 500 or the Dow, and you were just yeah. doing this from what age? Like what age did you actually – like when was the first time you – 18. Okay. So, so about 18, you started the stock market and you were kind of hooked and then you yeah. meet this. Okay. Keep going about this calculus teacher. That's interesting. And, and this, this whole time that I was 18 to, you know, 23, mm -hmm. I wasn't really paying attention. I was kind of doing longer positions just to, to, off, to have a better profit than sure. uh, savings and stuff like that, which is not hard. I was, when I did like 3% a month, I was like, yes. Sure. <laughs> yeah. Like very yes, you have yeah. no idea. But eventually, three percent a month became easy. But three percent a month is a lot compared to you know real estate or whatever. Sure, you, sure. And I didn't have that. Uh, you know, I couldn't buy a house. I just had like I don't know twenty thousand. Sure. Uh, but for an eighteen-year-old, like and yeah, that's good. I mean, three percent on twenty grand—that's good. But eventually, my accounts start growing. Yeah. And now it's it's the catch. So when I sold my company, I was making 2% a day and I sold it like for 250,000 reais back okay. then. And 2% uh, was enough, you know, more than enough for me to live okay. And then yeah. I was like, why am I worth it? <laughs> you know? So I sold the company, took the money and I flew to Europe. And you flew to Europe from Brazil. Okay. For vacation or just for fun? Like just no, I dropped out of college. I sold the company and I flew to Spain like in the next week and I didn't tell anyone. Wow. Okay. And that's when the whole nightmare started. Wait, wait, why, why did you, why did you leave from Brazil to Spain though? If you, I mean, what was no, the, like, it, it, it was like a, just to do something different. Like, no, I, I didn't plan to move. Yeah. Just to travel. But I okay. just bought a one way ticket. Gotcha. And, uh, like I got a, you know, a stupid school. Just, I had a, a visa. Okay. You know, like I, in case I wanted to stay longer, sure. I just, you know, I would renew it. Mm -hmm. uh, but then I just uh, stayed there for a month. And funny fact, that's where I met my wife. Ah, in Spain. Is she from Spain? Is she a Spaniard? No, she's American. Ah, oh, that's funny. <laughs> okay, well, good. Okay, yeah. so, okay, so you're in Spain. You meet the the woman who's gonna become your wife one day. Yeah. And Which that... is bad because the conditions she met me were very far from ideal. <laughs> Like in a hostel or what? Like, tell me more oh, detail. Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> no, imagine that you're 23, single, and you just make 250,000 reais. Oh, yeah. I guess you're not, obviously you're not going to be in a hostel, yeah. <laughs> I'm thinking hostel. No, no, no. Not in terms of hostel because uh, the, the, the school offered me an apartment. Okay, gotcha. But I had a lot more money than usual, yeah. so, like... And also there was a big mistake because when I went to Europe, I asked my dad, like, because he went to Europe several times, like, how much money should I bring? Yeah. And he only went to uh, Madrid and it's a capital, which is a lot more expensive. And he said, oh, you should bring this much per day. Sure. And as you know, how much you spend in San Francisco is much different than, sure. I don't know, countryside. Chico, or California. Yeah. Somewhere obscure. Yeah. So suddenly I realized that I was very rich. 
Yeah, that's awesome. And so you did. Yeah. Were, so you just partied like crazy in in uh, in Europe, I guess. <laughs> top one top one party travel since ever i i still haven't beaten that that trip that's that's awesome sounds fun i wish i was there <laughs> oh, I, I wish too man i wish i could go back but now i'm married and it's all over for me i know same with <laughs> i won't i won't uh <laughs> we'll talk <Yeah>. later <laughs> okay so <laughs> So you're in yeah, Europe, so, you're partying it up, you have a lot of money, a lot more money than other people, you're still watching the stock market, you're uh, meeting ladies, you meet your eventual wife, and um, yeah. okay. So when I came back, a lot of stuff happened. Like I had this massive fight with my family because okay. I dropped out of college, because I sold the company. Mm -hmm. So pretty much the way I found to settle the score was pretty much just giving everything away. Like here, you want money, take all the money, the college is paid for, and uh, that also resulted in, uh, in me getting getting kicked out of my own place. Oh wow! <laughs> yeah. To kind of appease so, your to appease your family to kind of to, to make amends, I guess, with with your family. Oh, because it's like, man, how can you don't understand me? I, I almost died. Yeah. You give me a hard time. Like, you know, you didn't even ask why. Don't you think it's so? I, I don't want to get into this because. Sure. Like, yeah. No. It's... You know, but. I decided to just move away, but here's the thing. Wow. That's something that I, I, I'm trying to adapt hypes to because most of people come from where I came, which from that moment was zero, man. When, when, I, when I, I was kind of proud and dumb, that, in a perspective of a trader, I was really, really dumb. That was a very <laughs> emotional and stupid call, mm -hmm. you know, but it wasn't over money, it was over principles. Sure, yeah. But so you you literally you literally lost it all though. I mean, you had you had a lot of money. You went to Europe. You you know you party, travel, whatever. Then you had this kind of falling out with your family, and you you basically lost all your money, lost your you know yeah. any apartment or whatever you had, and and you had to start sure. from scratch at 23, 24, something yeah. like that. Um, wow. Yeah, and, and that's actually probably not that uncommon though from a lot of people out there who maybe they're young, maybe they're in their twenties. Maybe they don't have a whole lot. Maybe they just got out of college and they're dirt broke and they're like, how can I make some more money? And and um, you following the stock market, like what did you do next? Like did you think I'm going to become just an expert trader or like how did that work out? Here's the problem. If you make 2% a month and you have $100. Yeah, it's nothing. <laughs> so I knew how to make 2% a month, but. <laughs> yeah. You know, and now the problem, I met my wife in Spain, in Spain right? Yeah. And pretty much she decided to move to Brazil. But when she met me, I was the rich, successful dude. But when Got I came back, I was the broke, zero, nothing dude. Wow, yeah, that tests the relationship for sure. <laughs> yeah, and my, my wife comes from a good family, so I was very like, hey, babe, you know, I, I understand. And she said, like, I don't care. I'm not doing this for money. I'm going. Yeah. It was but I don't think she knew what she was getting. Sure. But she did. I, I can't, you know, like she came, she saw, she conquered kudos for her. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, but it was hard, man. No, I bet. Like, but the rest uh, is history. Now, now you're married. So that's that's a good, I mean, yeah, that's a good yeah. end story there. So my whole plan was like, okay, I have to make money as, yeah. as fast as I can go back to trading. Yeah. So I, I should start trading again. So that was the problem because I had zero. Sure. I had zero, and I had a wife coming. I had no. I had a dog and six hundred, <laughs> worth two hundred dollars. Wow. Right? And I was like, man, I have to figure all this out and what I'm gonna do. So, so I had to go back living with my mom, which was something like really bad for Tough. me. Like my mom loved it, of course. Sure. Like, I'm a single son, so sure. you need to understand. <laughs> I'm an only son, actually, and. Uh, but it was very, very shameful for me. Because, sure, you know, it's tough. I, I, I was independent really early. Yeah. You know, and uh, I, I had, like, it was hard, man. I remember, like, one of the, before I, I, I came back to my mom, I actually stayed, like, three months pretty much crashing in my friends' places. Mm -hmm. Like, the first days that I, I didn't even have a place to sleep and stuff. It was hard, man. Wow. Yeah, wow. I mean, yeah. again. Yeah, and, uh, well... Eventually, we were like there at my mom's and my wife arrived and we had no job. Like I, I was burning out of money. I was starting to sell my things. I had a, a like a, 
an airsoft collection. Okay. So I started to get a computer for my wife. Okay. You know, I, I had a guitar. Mm-hmm. And I, I started to buy her a cell phone. Mm-hmm. You know. And uh, it was bad, man, because it took me a while to buy these things. Yeah. You know? And I had to burn it all. Mm-hmm. You know. But we, and that's uh, when the, the, the nice part starts. We're like, okay, we have to make money. We have nothing. How do we do this? Yeah. And uh, I, I was, I was on my way because selling uh, supplements when you're strong and stuff, it's easy. Like yeah, everything. Stuff. Yeah. <laughs> but I was skinny, you know, depressed, white, and mm-hmm. uh, I looked like a ghost. <laughs> and I, 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 I no sales, and that wouldn't fly. Mm-hmm. So we decided to start blogging. Mm-hmm. Okay. <laughs> because we looked online how to make money online. Sure. We only had computers, right? Mm-hmm. So we looked into blogging, affiliate marketing, you know, inter- all things internet. Yeah. We tried to do a couple of blogs, but I'm a kind of guy that I don't believe that I can sell something that I don't believe in. Mm-hmm. And I was telling people, you know, like giving like advice about how to do stuff while I was feeling like horrible. Like, man, I'm no one to tell these people what to do. With it's hard. Life. Yeah, that's hard. <laughs> and I decided instead of blogging about life let me talk about stuff that i know yeah games. so i decided to do like a website for games and stuff and okay. maybe write some reviews and maybe youtube who knows yeah and uh i never finished that site but because i had the realization that i was like man i already did two websites yeah i know two websites you know so and i know how to sell so what i did was pretty much we start banging on doors and sending facebook messages hey do you need a website <laughs> okay yeah you know uh we used to go to facebook and and see all the businesses that had facebook pages but not websites yeah and we start calling and sending messages and that's how i started getting clients so you started building websites for other people <clears throat> because yeah. of the skills that you learned by building websites yourself and trying to do things yourself yeah. Yeah, now it's very similar to I, I've kind of been in that that stage as well. Now it's very similar, but uh, keep yeah, going. I, I think a lot of guys have done websites in their lives, especially sure. the ones who, who work with this technology area, right? Yeah. Uh, well, and then we had to learn how to use Photoshop, how mm-hmm. to use Illustrator. <laughs> Man, let me tell you something. A client came here. I'm like, hey, can you do this? Mm-hmm. I'm an expert. I, I had no idea. Mm-hmm. I had no idea how to do it. I just remember me and my wife coming, you know, like, oh my God, Google it, Google it. We had to figure out, and we did. Nah, that's good. Time after time, time after time, there was always a new challenge because we learned how to code PHP, CSS, mm-hmm. HTML, you know, Googling. Yeah, no, that's awesome. So yeah. you, and you already had some, some, some uh, coding yeah. shops, you know, from your earlier days, yeah. but. So you guys basically learned to code websites from scratch, you know, whatever PHP using whatever. I don't know. Did you use WordPress and things like that back then? Uh, yeah. I still do. Yeah. Because I, I still own uh, an agency now. Okay. It grew, and that, that's how I started. And then we realized that we had to learn Photoshop because we, we made the websites for people, but they think like a website is like a magic sales machine you open a website sure. and they think uh clients are gonna <laughs> just gonna yeah you know, come from the, the the internet yeah what's the internet i don't know they just appear but they'll just buy stuff they'll just buy anything you want <laughs> not like that no imagine that you're like a, a drop of water in an ocean yeah why would you find it? yeah you know so we decided to like okay we have to teach them how to make this beautiful so we just we start designing uh and then we start doing like uh, logos, branding packages, you know. So I, I specialized in uh, coding, and my wife did the design. Okay, and she's cool. Very hard. So it grew like that, and then we we realized that even we when we made nice websites, nice banners, nice everything, uh, they weren't selling. Yeah. So we learned how to sell, which is you okay. know internet marketing. All the marketing. General. Yeah. Yeah. We're huge as you know um and at this point we were already like with a few clients you know like yeah working on ongoing basis and we we start growing growing i started doing websites for two hundred dollars okay cheapest website is three point five thousand dollars okay wow 
So you developed this agency though, where you were doing all these different things like web design, Photoshop or design, branding, marketing, um, digital marketing, whatnot. And, and I'm sure you grew, you grew that agency pretty good. Exactly. And as soon as we couldn't work anymore because we, we had such a big, uh, flux, you know, of clients, yeah. we start delegating because I always knew how to do it because I had employees before. So, you know, I was used to the mechanics. And uh, mechanic, such a gamer word, right? Oh my god! <laughs> yeah. And uh, well, and nowadays it's beautiful because back in the days I, I couldn't uh, delegate like we do. We, we everybody works remotely now. Yeah. It's beautiful. Yeah. And it's cheaper and better for everybody. Oh yeah. So now I can have like several clients in no office. Yeah. You know, it's amazing. So now you, so now you're making some capital. I mean, or now you are making some revenues and making some profits. Yeah. And um, it, were you still trading at the same time? Like while this was all going on, were you still trading on the I side? I started trading. Uh, into, uh, I don't remember. Like after a couple of years, where I started making some money and I had money in my bank account. As soon as I had like ten thousand dollars in the bank account, I was like, okay, I, I can't let this money just sit there. Sure. That's okay. When I started I don't remember exactly when sure. it happened. Yeah. And I never stopped. But it was stock. It was stocks initially, right? Like stocks from like the yeah. Dow. Or, yeah. I started with, and then it's the funny part. Uh, the, one of the reasons I started doing websites is because remember when the guy did the website for me and I said it was very expensive and stuff? Yeah. Yeah, the guy charged me a lot of points. I, <laughs> I, I won't even say how much because I don't want to feel stupid. But <laughs> that's when I realized, man, I'm going to make websites. Now that I realize so easy that assholes charge me that for website oh my god and back then it was it wasn't quite so commoditized so you could charge like you know you somebody could get it for 500 bucks and another person would pay five grand you know and people oh, just no, didn't more. people just didn't more. know what it costed back then yeah no i totally yeah, it's been in the same situation but um yeah keep, keep going yeah. though so <laughs> then as soon as like i start trading you know in the beginning i i wasn't very um consistent i wasn't profitable at all in the beginning and now i think if i can tell everyone a very good trading uh yeah please i always knew the, the technical analysis i always knew like how to research you know the specific places that i should look for information before they hit the news and stuff like that yeah but i was so off my game because man that whole thing made me depressed you know it, it really affected my, my confidence yeah i wasn't being able to make money mm-hmm even though I was using the same strategies that I am now, you know, and, uh, but emotional mistakes were getting in the way. Yeah. Yeah. You know, Hypster starts to take form. Okay. Right. Uh, and then, uh, in one year or something, I, I got profitable. I was making money. My account was growing, but I was still making a lot more money on the agency. Yeah. Okay. Then, uh, Trading. But this is so, all trade, and this is all trading manually, right? Like you're just literally going yeah. and trading yeah. by yourself, like through no through no I systems or. Okay. I never touched anything automation until 2017. Okay. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. So. But 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 okay. So, all right, keep going. Keep going. I have a few questions, but keep going. Yeah. Well, I'm just wondering. So when did you actually get into? So you're trading and you're starting to make money in the stock market, kind of doing it on the side again, and while you have this agency. And I'm assuming you're learning a lot, you know, in terms of how to do trading, how to trade, how to do technical analysis, um, how to find news, things like that. When did you actually discover cryptocurrency? Like, where did that enter the picture? Because, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, it's, it's the sad part. <laughs> I'm one of those guys that threw some Bitcoins away back in the day. How many? How many did you throw away? Uh, <laughs> you're probably like, oh, these are worth like a buck or I don't know what they were worth at the time. But Dollars. how much? The two of them, six dollars. Wow! So you had you had big you had two bitcoins for six dollars. Wow! Well, that must have been early on, pretty early on. I don't even remember when. I just remember that I was researching how to make money online, and I found this make your money, make your computer work for you Bitcoin. I was like, fuck yeah! Yeah. You know? I yeah. love this stuff. Oh, so that's crazy. I mining, and then I had to leave my. Comp now it's the funny part. I had a laptop and two months mining Bitcoin with a bad laptop i got two bitcoins wow that was like 2010 or something or not or 11 or i, I don't know I what don't, year it was but well i just remember it was very hard to set up so was, i'm sure yeah it was bad you couldn't buy bitcoin back then yeah only mine it was very weird and i don't remember 
Okay, yeah. It wasn't really a thing. I kind of just did it just because. And I remembered that I had to format my computer. I was like, man, fuck this thing. Like, I'm two months with my computer turned on for $6. I know. Yeah, and it was nothing back then. Yeah. <laughs> I just formatted but it. it. But it planted the seed. I mean, I'm sure it planted yeah. the seed back then. Maybe I, you didn't realize. Maybe you didn't realize it, but yeah, I didn't really understand what was blockchain. And yeah, that was kind of just this. That was my first contact with cryptocurrency. Okay, I, I didn't really, you know, became a for me. I didn't really look into it, and sure. I didn't realize the technology. Same same so, thing happened to me. I didn't have Bitcoin at six dollars, but. I heard it over and over and over, and I kept hearing about Bitcoin, and I thought, ah, uh, this is just some financial, <clears throat> some financial tool. I didn't even realize it was related to like computers, computer science, and blockchain. And I was like, if I would have known that back then, I would have definitely invested at least a couple hundred dollars, right? Just be because of the pure speculation. But, uh, but um, I never gave it the time of day. But uh, that's another story. Keep keep going with your story. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I think all of us had that what if, you know? Like, yeah. Every time that someone tell, uh, asks me, like, if you could go back in time, what would you do? I would go back in 2008 and tell, hey, buy Bitcoin. Tons of Bitcoin. <laughs> tell, your, tell your dog, your wife, your, your kids, your house, your car. Bitcoin. Buy it all. Yeah. Yeah. And then just party, forget about life. Yeah. And sell it. In, in stay the alive. Stay alive for about five or six more years. <laughs> That's it. Yeah. But, um, okay, so I kept working on the agency. No crypto, nothing back then. And then I think it was 2015 or 2016, I don't remember. Okay. A little before the big boom, you know, my friend came to me like, hey, do you know Ethereum? I went, what? You know, oh, you can trade it and stuff. <clears throat> it's like Bitcoin. I was like, trade Bitcoin? Because for me, Bitcoin is like that weird thing with my computer. Sure, yeah. What? You know? So... I have to, to admit that I was one of these guys that are like, uh, this is shady. I'm going to... Skeptical. Yeah. yeah. But I'm going to stay with stocks. I don't okay. like this crypto thing. You know, it's not real money. Yeah. But it took me months to actually understand how the blockchain works, even as an engineer, which I think that shows uh, how immature the, 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 the whole environment oh, yeah. is. Because it shouldn't be complicated. No, the... It's not. The interesting thing now, though, that it's interesting, I think, that you're saying is that back then, whatever year, that was like probably 2011, something something like that, let's just say. And it was so foreign to people, even developers, engineers, and they were like, ah, oh, this isn't real money. Like, how did this, this shouldn't be that hard. Now the mainstream people, like the mainstream, my parents, my sisters, my brothers, my friends, a lot of them feel the same way. Like, what is this Bitcoin thing? It's not real money. It's a scam. It's not really this. And I'm like, no, it's legitimately money. Like you could connect your bank accounts with these exchanges and funnel the money back and forth. Somebody could pay me in Ethereum and I could literally deposit back into my bank account. Like they just don't understand how it all works. And they think it's this, this, this ones and zeros in the sky and it's not real. But if I get paid $500 in Ethereum, that is $500 in US dollars if I want it to be, right? So it's, like, it's, it's similar now, like but... Their bank account is real. Yeah, it's, it's just a different audience now is coming to terms with what's happening. And, and it's already happened for like the innovators and the people that, the developers, the engineers. But um, it's fascinating because once the, the mainstream does get over the fact that, oh, this is real, this is tangible, this is actually, you know, um, a real technology, real money... It'll go from there, but but yeah, but yeah. keep keep going. It's a little sidetrack, but it's interesting no, 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 insight. But you see, I think that's a very good paradox to the whole crypto <laughs> industry right now. Yeah, like, I always say that we still, sorry, didn't see <clears throat> the the cheap jobs, the crypto cheap jobs yet. Right. It's not gonna reinvent the wheel. Right. It's gonna make it cool. Yep. And, and you know, like Steve Jobs didn't you know come up with the MP3 player. Well, yep. I think it was the Chinese. They they had like those weird ones. I remember, yeah. Smartphones, not him too. He just, you know, made it cute. He repackaged you know, it and like, yeah. yeah. And I think that's what crypto needs right now. Because even myself, sometimes I give up on buying crypto because it's just so complicated. Yeah. You know, like I have to deposit my bank, you know, Gemini and six time mark. It's a pain. Yeah, it's a pain. Clunky, you know. And the government doesn't help. My bank uh, hates it. Yeah. When I when I opened my my business, I went to open a, a new bank account at Chase, and the guy's like, "Is this Bitcoin stuff?" I mean, I sell indicators. Yeah. It's like, you know, like 
and the guy's like, oh, because if it's anything Bitcoin, we're going to close your account. Yeah. You know? I had a similar experience with Chase, actually, where I was buying Bitcoin through credit cards, right? Just on Coinbase. I was just buying. And I was like, this is incredible. You could buy Bitcoin on coin. You could buy Bitcoin or Ethereum or whatever on, on Coinbase with a credit card. And then literally you don't have to pay that off for 30 days or a month. And in that 30 days, the price is going way up through the roof. So you could put it on credit. And obviously Chase didn't like that. And I started gaming the system where I was like, okay, I could also buy Bitcoin and get points on credit cards and actually get real money from these points on credit cards. And you could kind of game the system. And I was actually starting to make videos on that. And then they shut the whole thing down. And I was like, ah, son of a bitch, they figured it out. And then they started charging for cash advances. And so then the whole thing kind of fell apart. But um, but uh, yeah, so I, sorry, I got, I got off track again. But. but I think that's the game. Like everyone that wants to make money with the financial markets or whatsoever, you have to understand the rules of the game. Yeah. If you know where the loopholes are, good for you. Yeah. You're smart. Like, and also, you're not hurting anyone. You're hurting the bank. Sure. I think for most of people, you yeah. know. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay, yeah. So, so, so get back. So you were – so now you're trading, you kind of discovered cryptocurrencies, discovered Bitcoin. So, you know, so you, what happened was this. Yeah. My friend told me about it here. And when he first told me, I think it was around $10. Okay. Then I looked into it. I, you know, this whole blockchain thing again. I was like, oh, I can't understand this thing. I watched a few TED Talks and stuff. But it wasn't clear. I, I didn't see the value. Yeah. And I forgot about it. And then one week after, my friend came to me like, hey, man, you have to check this Ethereum. It's $30. I was like, what? <laughs> so triple in one week or something i don't remember or something like that i was like sure. okay i'm gonna look into it so i bought a lot of ethereum at 30 dollars a lot i don't remember how much sure. i don't know two grand three grand something like that I don't sure remember. and then I, I i kind of forgot about it okay and when i, I looked like two weeks after it was 200 dollars. wow that's awesome I was, like, I was yelling that never happened to me in my whole life yeah and now it's the Remember uh, when you said when you when you buy like stuff with uh, Coinbase, they freeze your assets for one week. Yep. Well, I didn't know that, and and I got excited because of my gain, and I bought a lot more. Um, oh. I used all <laughs> my profit to buy everything around like two hundred something dollars. Right. But then there was this thing that. Took one week to, and then I saw Ethereum hitting three hundred something, and the same thing happened to me. But it wasn't quite as clean as what you're saying. But like I bought, thinking I can use it immediately, and then Coinbase held it for a week. That pissed me off like no other. But yeah, okay, so it affected you. I'm sure it affected a lot of people. <laughs> Eventually, in the end, I lost money. Okay. <laughs> oh man. But, but at least I saw like I saw a volatility that I've never seen before. You saw and yes. Later, I was like, man, fuck this. Yeah. I don't even have to like this. Light bulb <laughs> went on. I'm going to look into it. The next week I had a Poloni X account. Gotcha. You know, and that's how I started trading crypto. Like, And the light bulb just kind of clicked. And yeah, I, I feel the same way. Like the light bulb just clicked when I was like, everybody's talking about this is so volatile. Don't get into crypto. It's too volatile. I'm like, but, but that's why you want to be into it. It's so volatile that you can make these big gains. I mean, it's going up and down 30%, 40%, 10%. You know, that's. Those are big gains when you have a, a chunk of money, but um, Man, I, I was I was a coward because I waited so long to get in heavy. When I when I got in like a bigger position, Bitcoin was two thousand dollars. Sure. And when I first saw it, it was like three hundred or something. Sure. Yeah. You know. So, uh, but so, also it's it's because I didn't understand the technology and I don't invest in something that I quite don't understand. Sure. Like the guys who knew back then and had the information and understood the principles, man, smart money. Congrats for that. That makes they sense. Saw the right people, they had the, the technical capacity to understand it and makes apply sense. it. You deserve your millions, man. Yeah. Because I read it and I was like, what? Yeah. So I, I see a lot of hate with early investors. Like if you just bought out of luck, I don't really respect you. Sure. But if it was a conscious, conscious call. Yeah. No, I think I think it can still happen today. I mean, I think obviously the prices are different now, and it, but the yeah. but the crypto market in general is still very early. It's young, it's yeah. nascent, and uh, I think there's going to be a lot more of that to come. Just not the way that you're maybe you're seeing on Twitter and in the media. But I think 
we're still early on. I mean, a lot is still going to happen in this market. And um, but okay, so you're you're trading you're trading now in Polynex, right? And you have an account, and light bulb goes on. You're like, okay, this is volatile. I can I can do something with this. And then how do you how do you turn that into like an idea to create hypester and spectra indicator and all that? <clears throat> It took me a few months to get used to crypto because the behavior is pretty different from the other market. Yeah. And, uh, I lost some money trading, but it's normal, you know. Sure. Like the first ninety days was, were really hard for me, and then when <laughs> I started getting consistent, it was like. Sure. But I remember until I got consistent, uh, Bitcoin, uh, I think, got up to five thousand, and then it crashed on July to three thousand. Sure. And I started trading heavily. On this drop, okay. so I was trading like a, a bloodbath. Yeah. And, uh, and after that, I almost like, gave up because I was like, ah, oh, this is the bubble, you know. And uh, funny, but I didn't, and that's when like my portfolio took off. Went up to twenty. Of, <laughs> yeah, I didn't have a lot of money. Yeah. But after that, I had. Yeah. You know. Uh, so what happened was that I made a decent amount of money. Yeah. And I showed that to my friends, and they were like, what? <laughs> you disappeared for two months, and you came back with this? Yeah. And they were all like, what you're doing? And I started showing like what I was doing and stuff. <clears throat> and instantly, uh, I have this friend who, his superpower is that he knows everybody. Yeah. You know, you know like those guys that, do you need to talk to someone? He knows. They're just connected, yeah. Yeah, dude, like makes it happen mm -hmm. and he's a pretty good friend i know him since ever since high school yeah and and pretty much uh he had some friends you know, like those, those old guys they made a lot of money with communications and then they decided sure. to open a crypto hedge fund uh in belize because of taxes obviously sure and uh they had a few analysts and stuff but they they were like three months old or something but they had the capital yeah but it was very hard to find like professional crypto traders okay. you know, at this point and uh my friend told them about me and they told me like hey come here talk to us and i was working with the agency mm -hmm. i had my business i had like uh i have other stuff too like some amazon products and sure. you know some other startups sure. that you know i diversified as i made the money um and then when i first got to the fund I started as a one of the analysts, but I was outperforming the CIO. Okay, so so you just to make sure I, I understand you, so you went and started working for a fund for like a hedge fund for the crypt for the crypto hedge fund. You started yeah. working for them. Okay. So pretty much it was like that. Uh, I said, hey, I have my business. Yeah. So if you need to stop working for my stuff, I, I cannot delegate, but that's gonna cost. And sure. If you guys pay for that, I work for you. Yeah. Okay. They were not willing to pay how much it costed. So we decided to work on a commission base. Okay. They gave me some money. And they said, you, you're going to make a, a higher percentage, but you only make money out of commission. Got it. And I like that because I, I was always a business person. I don't like a, a steady wage. Sure. Give me commission and I'm going to wreck it. And you'll you know? do, yeah, yeah. So like in one <laughs> month or something, I was like outperforming everybody. So the guys pretty much said like, uh, do you want to... Uh, you know, run the, the other analysts. I'm like, sure. But but this is still manually trading, right? Or are you yeah. are you starting to build anything? Okay, so this is all manual still. Yeah. Okay. It was all manual. It was very nice because I was never able to uh, delegate trading to other people. Sure. And I only uh, I was only concerned with my trading, and that was like my first experience. How how to teach people how to trade? Yeah fast and they can't lose money because otherwise the clients will just kill you. Yeah. You know? And that's how <laughs> Spectro first uh, started because when I got to the to the CIO position, it was much easier to get money than mm -hmm. people to manage the money. Mm -hmm. It was like this crypto boom, everybody, man, people are throwing money in our faces. Sure. But it's just, it's humanly impossible to manage a bigger amount of money by yourself. Sure. You know, and crypto exchanges, they're not reliable, as you know. Sure. So I like to, you know, to spread a position over several exchanges in case of flaws and stuff like that, especially because when I trade with other people's money, I, I'm very, very careful. Sure. And, and that's something that I realized mm. that made me quit afterwards. Mm. But 
what happened was they wanted me to escalate the trading process, you know, so we could handle more capital. Sure. But they didn't want to pay the traders. Sure. So I had a bunch of professional trader friends, but I could not, you know, poach them sure. because I could never pay what they're making. Yeah. I could never work for a cryptocurrency hedge fund. Sure. For a, you know. Yeah. Because cryptocurrency. So it's still yeah yeah no I get it. I had to pretty much get random people that I met anywhere that I could and teach them how to trade like me mm. and get the money and you know but as it's very obvious that it wasn't successful okay because I didn't have the resources or the time sure you, know, you cannot create a trade in one month sure of course it takes a lot of training I mean a lot of people try to trade and it's it's hard it's not easy to do yeah but they kept pushing pushing and I was very stressed at that point you know because my performance started decreasing because I realized that when I trade, you know, uh, third party money, it really affects my, my calls. Sure. And I was, you know, very stressed and they're like, no, you have to, to do it. And I was making okay money. And I was like, why not? Right. Yeah. It's a new experience. And that's when I decided like, hey, so why don't I automate, you know, my strategies? Yeah. I mean, look, and I knew how to go Java, C++ and, you know, some other stuff a little bit. Yeah. Like HP. CSS, yeah. a little bit of Python and stuff like that. So I started looking into uh, coding languages. You know, uh, I, I didn't like, never liked MetaTrader, to be honest. Okay. I, you know, it's very 1990s. Mm -hmm. I needed to upgrade their system. Mm -hmm. And that's when I first uh, read about TradingView. Okay. And they're completely like, Web based, which is very, very cool. Yeah. You know, it gives me a lot of flexibility. Mm -hmm. And the, the charts are so much better than the, the meta trader ones, usually speaking. So I tried to like it. And I didn't know about Pine, which is their coding right. language. Yeah. So when we when we when I saw Pine, I started <laughs> learning about it and then in one month I had a bot working. Wow. You know? So you essentially coded a bot from scratch using Pine which is the trading view kind of proprietary trading view uh, programming yeah. language. You created like this bot, this AI bot to start, what was in it? Like what was the, that first bot? I'm kind of curious. Like what was like that, that first thing you automated or how did that, what did that look like? Okay. So the first thing that I automated was uh, a few basic strategies that I had. Okay. Uh, I'm going to, I don't want to start my strategies out and I'm not going to, no, you should. I can explain, uh, in a very simple way. Just so a high level. A very yeah. Classic strategy. Bollinger bands with RSI. Right? Okay. So, uh, if I have to tell you what is RSI, Bollinger bands, price action, reversal, it takes long. Sure. But if I tell you, hey, when this light goes green, you just fucking buy it. Yeah. Yeah. It's easier. Yeah. So, no, that's, <laughs> that's what everybody wants to know is when, when do you buy it? I mean, and yeah. there's so a lot of theory, I mean, but yeah. You know, how do I do this thing to pop when those conditions are met. Right. Uh, and that's what I did. I, I had a few strategies. I got the, of course, I started with the simplest one. Sure. Because I, I had to learn. Mm -hmm. And then I started growing with time. Uh, it took me like seven versions. Okay. To get, you know, closer to where I am now. Yeah. In spectro. And now it's the, the funny part. So I lost <laughs> everything again, kind of. Oh, no. So, yeah. Wait, wait, real so, quick, real quick, before we get into that, real quick. So you built up, like, how long did it take you from the time you kind of started to build this bot initially? And then how long did it take you to get to like a, not not necessarily to where it is today, but just to where it was like a functional product? And were you using it at the fund at that point? Or did you? Uh, so we never really used it at the fund. Okay. And now it's going to be the, the, the fund story. Yeah. So... When the bot started to operate automatically, when I had the strategies, you know, more chiseled and uh, yeah. the, the automation, we, we were able to create our own client, you know, but I didn't hold the, this intellectual property, so I don't have this client, but okay. I'm doing my own now. Yeah. And, uh, at this point, it was... I, I don't remember exactly the time, but I remember Bitcoin Cash was pumping like insane. It was hitting like two point four thousand dollars. Yeah, the volume was like insane. It was on Bitrex. It was just insane. Like I was. I remember I was, that when it was going. I was yeah. Nagging it, 
making like 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%. I was printing cash, man. I, I remember that. I remember it. I didn't know how to handle that when it was happening. I was like, what do I even do with this? But yeah. I was trading. I was watching the, the bot trade it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so it was automatically buying for you. Oh, that's yeah, wild. The volatility was very high. That's wild. And I didn't have enough experience because what kills you in automation, it's not the moves. It's when it's like, okay. you know, like a sideways market. Right. So I, I just watched during the, the high volatility. So yeah. And now it comes the fuck up. <laughs> uh, I was like, I already called the guy from the phone, like, hey, we're good. We're good. Open the doors, let the money in. Yeah. All good. Because, like, I had, like, a, I don't know, man. I made, like, pretty much $200,000 with a, a, a $75,000. Wow. Wow, that's crazy. Like without, without touching the keyboard. Yeah. You know? Through through like, what, what? Through, through through the system you developed. I mean, through like your own creation. I was I was like walking around the office. Like, like yeah, what's oh going God, on? This is working. Yeah. This is working. And everybody was like, "What's happening?" I was like, "Shut up! Oh my God!" That's crazy. You know? Crazy, crazy, very nice. But now comes this stupid point. I got cocky. Yeah. The next day, I was like, okay, I'm retired, all good. I'm done. So, <laughs> I created like a HTML front end uh, where the, the bots and the reports to me, okay. so I could watch remotely from my phone. <laughs> yeah. Uh, now it's this very stupid part. And kids, if you ever automate, <laughs> don't do this. Don't try this at home. Yeah. If you're going to report, make sure the report and the data you get, it's the real data from the exchange is the real price you actually bought in not the, the price that they bought things oh you. no because first and that's the reason i stopped with automation in cryptocurrency okay you can tell me whatever you want but i'm i'm, I'm yet to see a, a, a rich uh 100 cryptocurrency automated trader sure like no I'm it, to see. it's tough no. I mean, it's you know, but you know better than most people. I mean, it's it's yeah, difficult. <laughs> the guys that I've met, they are successful. They already knew how to trade, so I don't really count, you know. Um, so I went. It was the weekend, you know. It was like a Friday or a Saturday. I remember very clear, of course. So I I went out of town to see my mom, uh, and I was checking everything from the phone. And man, money was rock. Just coming I was, like, in. Looking at the phone. And I was like, I think I'm gonna tell my mom that I'm very rich. Yeah. You know. But I decided not to, and that was a very smart move. When I. <laughs> it sounds very familiar, actually. <laughs> but go ahead. When I came home, I was like, what? what? Before. Oh, God. I'm, gonna... I'm getting. Oh, I'm sweating already. <laughs> so when I when I I decided like, let me check the exchange in mm -hmm. more like midnight, just before I sleep. When I saw the exchange, all the money was gone. I had like $20,000 in the bank account. Oh, oh, where did it go? Did it? Yeah. So, so what happened, I was doing like a very high frequency trading. Yeah. You know? And because of the volume, the executions were getting executed like with 30 minutes, uh, 30 seconds, one minute, sometimes two minutes. Okay. And sometimes not executing and sometimes executing twice. Okay. Yeah. So instead of having a money making machine i had a money burning machine oh it was just basically putting it into the market and yeah it lose all the profit it also lost all the money from the fund wow just oh, that's painful guess, guess who paid it you so all the money that i've saved oh man just up in smoke and that's yeah. why a lot of people think crypto isn't real but people like you, like me, I mean, things have happened and we really, you know, anyway, yeah, we learn from that, but. It was because of crypto. It was because of my. Sure. Pride. No, totally, totally. Yeah. yeah. Then, uh, well, then I got really upset because I like, I went from like, because $300,000, it was more than 1 million high, which made me a millionaire in a weekend. Sure. You know, for the Brazilian standards. <clears throat> and, uh. That's crazy. And I went from millionaire to back of 
about three years ago in one day, one day. Like, <sighs> That's, rough. Yeah. That's rough. That's yeah. rough. That was rough, man. But then I was like, you know what? <clears throat> I cried. I, but now, now it comes like the kicker. Mm. And and then the guys from the fund, when I was winning, they were really nice. Like, yeah, man, you were awesome. Go ahead. And then when I told them that I lost all the money, uh, my, they, they, no, they were like, oh, no. Oh, man, good. No all good. But then my friend who was in the board told me that, that you were like saying things like, man, this guy is such an idiot. How can... He lose all this money in the oh. biggest college market ever. And I was like, motherfuckers, I created all this stuff because you're cheap. Yeah. The first time things go wrong because you told me to, they told me to be aggressive. Like, go use the money. Yeah. And I was, man, I didn't have to pay it. And I paid it because I have principles. And then they said that. And I was like, you know what? Fuck this. But yeah. I, I quit it the next day. Oh, yeah, I could, yeah. I wouldn't blame you. I mean, I would, I would do the same thing. You know. And then that was like the big successful thing because if I kept there, I would have given them Spectro because I was creating Spectro for them. That's right. Yeah, that's true. Okay. So then you, so, okay. So that all happens and you kind of lose, you, you basically say, you know, fuck this, I'm, I'm going to go do my own thing. And at the same time you were building this, this Spectro indicator, you were building this platform, essentially this kind of machine learning platform, if you will, or I don't know if, I don't know if that's the right way to say it, but, um, Machine learning came after. Okay. Two months. Okay. Because I didn't even know how to use it. Okay. So then when I quit, I was like, okay, back to square one. I saved some money again. I had like $30,000, you know, from my companies and stuff. So it, that was more than enough for me to trade. Yeah. And I realized how the bot was powerful because I realized that my mistake was out of stupidity. Not sure. because the bot was bad. Sure. And sure. That was very, uh, preliminary version so from this moment on i started working a lot on it yeah so i realized that this whole trading school that we work nowadays uh in order for for achieve you know mitigating risks usually trade the confirmation right so you wait the reversal you know so you can you confirm it's a trend and then you sell it when it's down. So you lose a chunk. This sure. is a safe way to, to trade. Sure. But it's pretty much the only way you can successfully trade with the common indicators because sure. they're always a little behind. Mm -hmm. You know, and I realized that if I use like the, the stochastic and stuff like that, they never really predict. Sure. You know, what predicts? It's you watching the RSI going down and it's like, I think it's going to go down. It's, yeah, it's you, yeah. And hopefully yeah. you can take the bottom. Yeah. That's what we call catching a falling knife. Yeah. And uh, not many people are successful trying to do it. It's just against the odds. Yeah. I realized that if I kept banging on this, because I, I reached like a uh, like a precision level where I couldn't pass. Like I was around yeah. 55 to 60 percent precision, and I realized that if I only kept using you know combinations in between RSI, blah blah blah, it wasn't gonna cut it. Sure. So I like, what can I do? And then I was researching and got into <coughs> machine learning. And then I realized that machine learning can pretty much look for patterns that okay. you could, I would never think. Like uh, average time is 1.52345 divided by square root of ours, you know? Yeah. Yeah. So I started playing with it. Very rudimentary, nothing automated. Pretty much I was using uh, R scripts. Okay. Uh, in conjunction with Excel. <clears throat> okay. It was very rudimentary, you know, yeah. but it worked. Yeah. Because what I did was like I started gathering data. Yeah. Uh, from the exchange, because here's the thing, I I saved <laughs> the time frame of a hundred. Yeah. I don't remember several moves, moves that I considered good. Yeah. And then I went. That was that took me months. To do I bet. Yeah. <laughs> so I had to go in the exchange and and get the data. RSI, price action, everything I could from this move. Okay. Then after months, I gathered all the data, yep. and that's when I started data mining. <clears throat> okay, and you put all the data in the system, then you created some algorithm yeah. or whatnot. Yeah. So, okay. And then it came out with a, a equation. Yeah. That's fact. Wow, that's fascinating. So the equation, it's basically. 
and, and obviously, I, we, we obviously we won't get into the secret sauce, but um, I mean, the equation essentially is predicting certain types of movement based on these indicators in in a sequence based on some mathematical formulas, right? I mean, yeah. kind of in a nutshell. And here's the thing, man. I'm not reinventing the wheel once again. Sure. All right. I'm telling you right there mm -hmm. what I did, and if you're just you know disciplined enough, you just go there. You're gonna learn how to do it, and you, you're gonna find yourself there. Yeah. Hundreds of thousands of patterns. Yeah. I'm not concerned, you know, like, so that's the reason I don't want to sell automation. Yeah. Because I also believe that, like, <clears throat> it, it doesn't benefit the market. Because here's yeah. the thing, people that chase automation, and we talked about it several times. Yeah. They don't want to learn anything. Yeah. They're looking for a quick cash. Yeah. Yeah. And they hope. That they're gonna be the only smart guys in the planet. They're gonna pay fifty dollars mm -hmm. for a special tool in the internet. And they're gonna, and they're gonna yeah, with a clip. Yeah. Like you never thought for a second that, <clears throat> you know, like does that seem like? Does like, it seem real? Yeah. <laughs> right. You know, and uh, that's like my, if I could do a, a book about it, I would. Like, be skeptical. Yeah. You know, test everything. Yeah. And. Uh, I didn't want to sell my automated strategy first because it works. And sure. now that I have money, it's there. Like uh, my my fully automated bot that I have left, I stopped it in the last pump. Yeah. Uh, I made sixty percent in uh, one hundred sixty days. That's wow. not a lot. Wow. I know crypto guys are like, oh, I made that in a day, but well, <laughs> no, I made it without doing anything. Yeah. So. No, that's awesome though. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. It could have, you know. Could be a lot better, but I'm kind of comfortable right now with sure. the, the amount of, I'm making and how it is. So I I didn't want to offer the thought because like how much I would charge for it. You know, like I have my money. Yeah. The amount of money I make with the bot running with my money, mm -hmm. you you are not gonna pay for it. Mm -hmm. You know, and if I if I rent this to you, like as an individual, you you're not gonna afford it probably sure. as an institution, but probably institutions have a much better. Algorithm than me. They do similar things, yeah. Yeah, so, but also it would be very hard to set up the integration, the automation and stuff and stuff. And also there's the problem and when you sell automations, the liability. Yeah. Because the crypto exchanges suck. Yeah. Like, bad. Yeah. Bad. Support's horrible. The API. Oh, yeah. The, yeah. Binance, Bitrex, Polynex, none All of them are really yeah. conceived, you mm -hmm. know, for real money. Yeah. At least with my. No, investors. that's one of the big issues with institutional investors getting in is that all these all these issues are, are there. Yeah, but also they have the resources. Like let's say the the Polynex, I know Polynex is in Delaware. So if you're a very bad trader, you go and you buy a house right by this. You know, you figure out where the server is, so you have the minimal latency. Sure, <laughs> sure. You, can, you know, you can do it professionally, mm -hmm. but I'm not an institution. Uh, sure. I don't have this kind of money. So that's why I'm not selling automation. You know. Because I, and also like let's say the the, the the APIs fail and you lose money, who are you gonna blame? Yeah, yeah. And that happened to me. I cannot promise that's not gonna happen to you because the API sucks. But it but it's a guy. So it's a guide though. It's not like a get rich, push button and print money type of type of product. But it is something that can help you help you gauge the market and help educate you about the market. I mean, at least yeah. that's how I've been using it and how I've been looking at it. I haven't been using it as like, I'm going to push this button and get rich, but it's, it, it gives me a lot of insight and I'm a, I'm a relatively beginner trader, right? I'm not a, I'm not an expert, maybe beginner to intermediate. I'm, I'm relatively new at trading um, generally, but I'm learning these patterns. I'm learning these technical indicators and it gives me like that more confidence, you know, when it's buy or when it, when it shows different clouds or when, you know, it's showing different sentiment in the background, um, whether it's bullish or bearish, it gives me a bit more to go off of, right. Than just my own. I think this is right. I think this is right. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and so yeah. that, that makes me happy because that's the goal. So it means that I'm doing something right. Yeah. Because you're, uh, I try to keep trading simple. Like as you can see, I'm like a very normal guy. So sure. like, everything that I try to learn, I try to to make it simple. Sure. Yeah. So when when it comes down to trading, I try to think of three things you have to know: direction, mm -hmm. intensity, or mm -hmm. momentum, call it whatever you want, and uh, you know, interesting price levels. Okay. Like, or the resistance. Yep. Like those are the three three things that you need to know. And 
you, you can use whatever setup indicator you want to figure out those three things. Okay. Right? So I decided to not recreate the wheel, but do like Steve Jobs did. Make it easier for yeah. you to see. Yeah. For instance, the X confirmations algorithm. It's nothing really fancy, man. Anyone can do it. And it, what 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 does it do? Pretty sure. much, I created an average. So let's say RSI, stochastics, DMI, OBV, MFI, whatever. It, it's twenty indicators. Okay. And if I'm I'm giving you the algorithm right here. Sure. Because this is not proprietary. Tell us the secret so, sauce. <laughs> yeah. Anyone can do this, you know. And uh, people have done similar things in, sure. in the past. It just made it easier yeah. you know, and more intuitive. So if this indicator is, you know, in the oversold position, then it counts one point. This other one is also in the oversold one point. Sure. Every indicator has its own average, you know, sure. its own weight. And this is the secret sauce. And that I'm not going to give it to you because <laughs> that's what the machine learning does. Sure. It finds the perfect weights. Ah, weight, it weight averages it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Gotcha. Yeah. I, the X algorithm is pretty new, so I haven't really applied a lot of the spectral technology to that. Gotcha. So it's still a little rudimentary, but so when you have those, you know, those arrows, the confirmation, it literally means that Spectre checked 20 indicators for you and say, hey, it's oversold. Okay. Okay. So, yeah, I really, I really want to get into the indicators and like, and actually look at the dashboard and go through it and um, I mean, keep keep telling us a little bit about this. Next time, I mean, we probably won't go through all the indicators like on the actual dashboard in this session, but I would love to have you back if you're open and willing to actually yeah. go through and show the audience of like, you know, these are the indicators I'm looking at. This is how it actually works. These are the arrows. Because a lot of people are going to are gonna watch this and they're going to think, you know, what's Hypester? What's these indicators they're talking about? They're going to go to your website. They're going to check it out and just look at it. But they're not going to really know. I mean, so please, everybody out there, go watch my previous videos on on Hypester, on Spectro. I've made a few just so you know a little bit more about what we're talking about, like in, in the context of this, because I know you're looking at us right now. You're not looking at, um, you know, the UI that, that he's built. But um, keep going, though. It gives context. I just want people to know that this will be one of, of a few different videos that we make to try to just to educate you guys about what this product is. Yeah, so the whole goal was like to make trading simpler and faster. Yeah. Because here's the thing, uh, because of crypto, I started day trading a lot more than I used to. Sure. Right? Uh, now we're going to, I think, get into a very uh, interesting area for most of the. Because before I was just talking crap about my life, right? And now we're going to actually uh, talk about some techniques. But uh, <clears throat> let's say you. Three things, and I think that's another thing that people that try to automate, they always just consider. Yeah. When you think of a bot, the only thing you care is the strategy. So you think you have to have like very good signals, right? Yeah. And follow them to the letter, and that's supposed to make you rich. Sure. So first thing, there are two things that honestly I think they're more important than the strategy itself. Yeah. First, it's finding assets. Okay. What do you mean? The screening process. This is more important than any strategy that you can come up with. You mean screening the assets that you're potentially going to trade on. Okay. Okay. Another secret tip that took me 10 years to realize because I was 10 years focusing on this strategy. Yeah. And this strategy do not avoid sideways markets. Okay. But you have a very powerful and thorough screening process that will that will avoid the, the sideways markets. Okay. How do you pick assets though? Like how do you like in a nutshell, like high level, like how do you go about out of thousands of cryptocurrencies or assets? How do you actually pick them? That is more complicated because the way I do, um, so I have a client that sucks data out of a few exchanges that I, I trade more Okay. because I have to run my, my credit, my, my screening criteria on my end. Okay. Because I, like a web app or anything it kind of it's pretty much an excel worksheet okay so what it does it, it screens through the, the the assets and uh it's like a, a four my way right sure it's like a, a four quadrant that's how you say it yeah quadrant. Uh, yeah quadrant yeah. yeah and uh this is based on uh my main criteria and this is my, my second criteria. okay yeah those criterias, I'm not going to tell you. I'm explaining how to do. Sure. I like to explain people how to think, but I'm not going to teach no, you. No, yeah, that knowledge. makes sense. Yeah, it's good. That, that's the, the form of code. You mm -hmm. know, like, so when I screen the assets, every
every single asset returns uh, a point. Sorry, I'm doing here. No, no, it's here. A, yeah. So it, it probably would be here or here or here or here. Okay. So 95% of the assets, they are always here. Okay. But a few assets are here. Those are the ones I trade. Gotcha. What can so, you can you give us any insight into the criteria or or no? no. Okay. No, because you know, like if I do it, then everybody will do it. <laughs> then it'll it'll wash it out. Yeah. Yeah. The, the two hard things is actually creating something that sucks the data yeah. really easily. That's the first thing you have to to you know solve. The second thing it's uh presented in a into a visual way. Yeah. But I decided to use quadrants. You can use whatever you want. Sure. Okay. Right. Um, but you're sucking through the API. You're, you're sucking data through APIs of different wherever. I yeah. mean, news exchanges, whatever. Hey, okay. I just I just paid people to do it. Oh, we like, need to talk about something else. I have a different idea, but this is a totally different conversation. So <laughs> we can talk later. But <laughs> but yeah. Let's do it. But but. So, yeah, man, and uh, that's the first thing. And here's the thing, like all these people, like oh, blah, strategy, blah blah blah. Man, you need. No strategy or bot at all if you pick a good asset. Okay. Because you can use like a simple entry tool such as MA crossing and it's going to work. That's really interesting though. And, and it's making me think I'm going to go this weekend now and I'm going to be thinking of what criteria would Roderick use to pick the assets? Because I, I totally agree with you. I mean, if you could even, I talk about sometimes on this, this, uh, this video series, like on my YouTube channel that if you pick assets that have a good sentiment and you can understand the sentiment of that asset just purely looking at positive negative or neutral sentiment in the market and there's a lot of different ways you can do that that's a big indicator right there just showing you that there's enough popularity with an asset but so i talk about that as well probably maybe in a different context but um totally agree with you if you pick the right asset wait, <laughs> trading is going to be good yeah this is just the first part what spectra does to solve the second part because okay. I know this is super hard for most of people sure. because it requires knowledge on several different things that thankfully I got because life's crazy, right? Sure. But Spectre at least solves 33% of the problem, you know? Uh, but still, there's the third part that also people always forget, which is execution. Mm -hmm. So you got the first, Just to, I just want to make sure I'm following right. So the first part is really finding the assets and somehow plotting that out visually to understand you have a good asset. The second part is actually applying technical analysis or techniques to evaluate that asset in the certain environment on an exchange, as an example, or, or in an exchange price, you know, all those kind of things. And the third is execute. Am I getting that right? Or yeah. Okay. Just here's a There's a very simple way for you to understand this. Like I teach that on, on, on my course. It's okay. like, you always see guys saying like, ah, oh, if I wasn't a shootout, bro, I would nail it. <laughs> I could go to the army. I, I would be a killer, you know? Uh, yeah. Would you? Yeah. You know, when bullets start flying, really? Would, yeah. No. It's the same thing with, you know, dealing with money. Yeah. Yeah. Of course, I'm not comparing war with this. I'm sure. just the, the emotional discharge. Sure. Right. Uh, it's the same thing as a, a car crash. Yeah. Every time that something bad's happened and someone asks you, like, what happened? Oh, it all happened so fast. Why? Because you kind of adrenaline just suddenly. It just, you, yeah, yeah. You know? And it's the same execution, right? So, how many times you, you took a decision, you made a decision, like, I'm going to buy it, but then you're going to buy it? No, 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 I'm not going to buy it. Anymore. Or yeah. you're in, you're in profit, or you're losing. Yeah. I'm gonna sell. No, 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 I'm gonna sell. It's gonna go up. No, no, it's gonna go It's down. gonna keep going up. It's gonna keep going. Yeah, and you don't do it, and then it goes way down. <laughs> Spectra solves all of it. Okay. Why? Because at least it will tell you to sell. Like if you. Well, it takes <laughs> the emotion. It takes the emotion out too. I mean, it helps with your emotional control. I mean, in a way, like all these firing emotions, you know. That's the first thing that I like about Spectro, at least the, the basic alerts, is because even if you bought in a bad hand, it will tell you when to sell. Like, man, it's going down, sell. Yeah. Because I feel like most of beginners, they don't handle risk well. They don't have clear stop loss uh, rules and yeah. stuff like that. So by minimizing their losses, mm -hmm. that ensures a much longer uh, life on the market. And, th and that's now what comes to the very hard part of this business. Because... 
it's a hard business to be in. Because here's the thing. 90% of traders lose 90% of their money in the first 90 days. Mm -hmm. That's a known fact. Mm -hmm. But if you think about it, my client has three months of life. Mm -hmm. Yep. As a rule. So I know as an average from previous data that every guy is meant to last 90 days with me. Okay. That's interesting. Yeah. Yeah. And I have to fight this. Mm. So far, my clients, you know, they haven't given up and we're like three months old. So it means that I'm already giving them more odds than the normal. Right. Which is what everybody wants is better odds, better probability. Remember the learning thing? Mm hmm. I need to allow them to learn because if you lose money really fast, you won't learn. Right. And that's what like a great expert first because I had to make our traders not be stupid sometimes. That's like, really yeah. clever because I, I personally have done that. Like in the stock market, I'll start with what, I don't know, a thousand bucks or whatever. And I've done this at different periods in my life, like starting from a pretty early age. And I'll lose and I'll lose it and I'll lose it quick. And so you don't learn. You're right. You're like you don't learn the market. And it's been a little different with crypto because I haven't like rushed it. I've been kind of watching it for a while. And so I'm getting a lot more familiar with it, how everything's, how everything works. But um, yeah, that's really interesting that Spectro kind of helps the user mitigate their own demise, like their own, you know what I mean? It helps them mitigate uh, to learn better, to actually stay in the game longer, to learn more and to stay in the game. You, you know, that's pretty cool. Here's the thing, man. Crypto and trading, they have the same problem. They're created by a class of technical people that do not understand normal people. Yeah. If you talk to probably uh, the guy who created it here, Vitalik Buterin, I don't know how you say Russian, sorry, guy. Vitalik so, Buterin, yeah. <laughs> he was genius, bro. Of course, yeah. Can you imagine talking to him? Like, yeah. Yeah. You know, like, can you explain me how this lightning network works? Sure, if you, you know. Half the words he says, you probably don't even understand. <laughs> he's a genius on his capacity, but sometimes, he might, he might not be a very good salesman. Totally, yeah. And the same thing happens with trading. The guys who created the educators, yeah, they were professional traders. Yeah, yeah. And like I was, when I first created Spectro, it was completely different because it was for me. Yeah, sure. So I decided, like, how can I make this simple? How can I make this, like, man, you don't have to know the behavior. You just have to know, like, when this happens, you do this. You need, yeah, you know? sure. So that's what I've been trying to do remember that those three things that i want to cover direction momentum and price levels yep i already give you direction momentum and now i'm working that's the new update okay uh, price levels okay wow i want to dig into that so bad like i want to dig in i want to i want to show people how to actually use the interface because now things are becoming a little more clear like i just i just signed up for it you know and i just started using it like, oh, buy, sell, okay, it's green, okay, it's red, you know, not understanding some of these fundamentals in the back, like like not even the fundamentals, but the philosophy of how you're actually going about and building it is interesting because it'll it'll help you to use the tool and to learn over time and learn to become a better trader. It's it's almost like training wheels. I don't want to say it's training wheels, yeah, but it it's almost kind of training really wheels. Good. Yeah. No, yeah, because here's the thing. That's something I realized, but the more experienced the trader is, usually the less educated they, uh, they use. Sure. Because you see it so many times that you kind of know where they are. Yeah. You know? And, uh, no, yeah, I totally feel that way. No, like I, I remember when I first started like day trading, which is relied a lot more on, on technical analysis. I was all about knowing every single indicator ever. Yeah. If you look at the screen, it looked like, you know, those fancy screens that, oh my God, this guy's a genius. Yeah. And what he's doing. Yeah. But I would call my wife like, hey, check it out. Like, I, this looks good, right? It looks cool. And she'd be like, whoa, it's damn, not, you're smart. <laughs> yeah. You know, sometimes you don't understand how the indicators work. And yeah. And you're like just playing four indicators that tell you exactly the same shit. Yeah. Uh, so eventually with time, as you get more experience, use less indicators. Okay. So would say like then you stop using spectra no it means that now i only use spectra gotcha Why? from the perspective of uh i'm not an expert but i have more experience than the normal guy at least i survived the first yeah, 90 I, days right that's fair definitely so, <laughs> yeah so what it helps me it, it it makes my analysis so much faster okay so that I makes sense cover more ground yeah faster 
That's a really good insight, though. Sorry, keep going. Keep going. Yeah, because with one look, I can kind of understand what's going on. Like, Right. Which is something that I really like in another system that does it, but honestly, I feel like it's not as intuitive that I'm going for. It's uh, Ishimoku or Ichimoku. I don't know how you guys the cloud, Yeah, I, yeah the, the cloud. Yeah. Yeah, the, their idea was to create something that pretty much gives you all the insight you need to make decisions with one glance. Yeah. Right? And that's what I'm going for. Okay. And I want to, I want to make it simpler and more effective. Of course, it's a challenge. That's really but, interesting, though, because because I I've again personally kind of felt that way. You see the price moving up or down, and you wait like long enough to where you yourself can validate. Okay, it is going down, and everybody has a different level of experience to validate when the price is going down or when it's going up. Right? Somebody that's brand new, they're gonna wait longer for it to go down further. Because they're new and they're going to say, okay, well, is it really going down? Is it really going up? Is it really going down? And they're going to wait longer until they could validate it. But somebody like who's really, really experienced, they can see it like right away, like and right at that immediate glance say, yes, I know this is going down and they could buy earlier, which could be X amount, X percentage gain or loss difference, you know? So yeah, I mean, now, I totally get that. That's pretty cool. Now there's the kicker. The new indicator I'm releasing, it's going to be a screener. Okay. So now I'm trying to solve the first problem. Yep, the asset choosing. And, and I already choosing have the a prototype that I've used, and it it, it works. So, so you're gonna basically release something to be able to to basically help people choose the asset, like to choose what asset to to actually trade so, against. So imagine it's a, a trading indicator. Yeah. So it has like several lines, and based on the color or the behavior of the line, you know it. It, but it's like each line is a different asset. Interesting. Okay. So the first line, let's say it's Tesla. The second line is gold. The third yeah. line is uh, dollar, euro. The fourth line is Bitcoin. Yep. So you can observe using Spectre technology several graphics wow. in one screen. And, and, and will it weight them? Like, I'm sure it'll arrange them in a certain way, right? That will I, give I, more I, validity. I Okay. Yeah, no, this is yeah. awesome. This is awesome. I mean, we have gone, I mean, we're definitely over an hour, hour and a half at this point, I think. And so I, um, I, I want to keep the conversation going. Maybe we split this up and, uh, maybe we have you back on the show and maybe, you know, I'd be curious to do a couple things and we could talk about this offline, but maybe next time we just get into some, like the actual interface, you know, some of the yeah. indicators, how you actually use the product itself. And then maybe even in the future after that, we go into specific strategies of how to actually use it to profit, right? Not just what it is, not just the basics. I, I want to, I really want to keep this going because I'm learning a ton from this. I know people are probably learning a ton from this, um, yeah. but I obviously don't want to keep this going too long and want to be respectful of your time, of course. So um, I'm good. Like today's my chill day. I've worked like 120 hours. <laughs> Week, I'm, I'm done. Okay. Yeah. No, I mean, I, I, I kind of feel the same way. It's, it's Friday here. Um, I mean, I think this was an awesome background about you, where you come from, um, you know, what you're trying to build um, for folks out there that have never used Spectro or, or Hypester, don't know what it is. Go to the links in my show notes and you'll be able to see a link to hypester.org. You'll also be able to see a link directly to Spectro if you want to use it. Um, you can sign up and if you keep the product for over a month, you'll get a free cryptocurrency course, which I actually made a video on. And that's something else I want to get into with you, Roderick, uh, the course itself. Maybe maybe in the future again, but how the course is broken down. I mean, it's a lot of modules. The course is easily worth a couple hundred dollars. I think you actually sell it for for $200. But if you guys sign up for Spectro, uh, you'll get that. If you stay on for a certain amount of time, you'll get that course. And just like everything he, Roderick is saying on this video, he's talking about these technical analysis. He's talking about how to trade. He's talking about mindset, you know, the things you need to be a successful trader in his cryptocurrency course, which I have gone through, not all of it. I've gone through some of it and I'm going through it every day you learn like a lot of these hardcore principles that will make you a better trader and will actually make you more effective at using Spectro as well because you're just going to be more educated and you're going to be, you're going to realize and you're going to see things a lot more clearly. Um, so there's a lot of value here and I hope you guys are turn, tuning in because I think um, we've barely scratched the surface on, on any of this and, and I, I hope it's getting you guys excited because I'm excited to talk to you more. I, I could go for another couple hours, but. Yeah, I feel like <laughs> we just started getting to the fun part and class is over we we yeah. did we did but that's okay it's a it's kind of a cliffhanger it'll be a teaser for everybody but um 
I mean, I want to meet maybe even next week. We can meet a few times and um, if you're open to it and, and kind of keep the conversation going, because um, I think it's going to be big. I think this is like you said, we barely scratched the surface. So, well, well, thank you. I mean, any anything else you want to leave for everybody before we leave? Um, I know you'll be back uh, hopefully, but um, anything else to leave with everybody before we we shut down shop today? It's good. <laughs> that's a good tip. No, that's good. That that's a good tip. If you believe if, if you believe in miracles, don't trade. Don't trade. Let's yeah. leave it at that. Well, I've seen a few miracles, but most of the guys who bet on miracles, they don't trade anymore. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So if you got yeah, and yeah, I'll, I'll just leave it at that. I, I have a lot more I can say, but um. I know a lot of guys who bought a lot of Bitcoin, you know, after this miracle run, and yeah. <laughs> They and, don't talk to me no more because I said I told you. Yes, yeah, yeah. You got to be careful with that. But uh, all right, guys. Well, thank you, Roderick. Really appreciate your time. I really appreciate uh, your your insights here. I'm gonna rewatch this just because I uh, I think I learned a lot from this and I wanna I wanna hone in on what you said. I think it's really valuable. Um, but really excited to have you back, guys. I'm Dan from CryptoCamacho.com. If you like this video, please subscribe by clicking on that little red button on my YouTube channel. Every day, try to bring you something of value, and we're going to definitely have Spectre, uh, <laughs> Spectre. We're going to have Roderick on again, so we can talk about this more. But uh, thanks, guys. Thanks again, Roderick, and we will talk soon again. All right, see you guys. See you later.